So we've just been looking at spatial interference patterns, where those high and low points, the constructive and destructive interference, occurred at different locations in space. But of course our waves vary in time as well as in space. So we can have interference patterns that occur at different points in time. The same kind of idea, and we can hear that very easily using sound waves. If you remember back, we looked at two waves that had slightly different frequencies. We're looking here again at that blue and red wave. Almost the same, but not quite. And when we add them together, we see that green wave there. Now that green wave is going up and down at two different frequencies. A fairly fast one that's almost the same as the frequency that the red and the blue wave are travelling at. But on top of that, that green wave gets sometimes very large and sometimes very small at a much slower rate. That's an additional frequency at which that green wave is going up and down. And we call that a beat frequency. It turns out that beat frequency, that much slower one, actually equals the difference between the frequencies of the red and the blue waves. Now if we do this with sound, we can actually hear that those two frequencies, the fast one and the slow one, the so-called beat frequency. So I'm going to play you some tones now. First up I'll play you a tone at 500 hertz. You can hear that tone, that's what 500 hertz sounds like. Now I'm going to play you a second tone that's a little bit different to the first. It's going to be 510 hertz. And there's that second tone. It might sound to you pretty much like the first one. In fact, in a minute I'll switch back to the first one and you think if you could really hear the difference between those two notes. So here's the first one again. Now if you've got very good hearing and you are quite musically inclined, maybe you've got perfect pitch. You could probably easily distinguish between a 500 hertz note and a 510 hertz note. But if we play them both together, they will overlap in time, and sometimes they'll overlap and reinforce, and sometimes they'll cancel out. And here's what that sounds like. Now there are two notes playing at the same time. There are two waves overlapping. And in fact, you can hear two kinds of frequencies. You can hear one that's round about 500 hertz, and you can hear one that's much, much slower than that around 10 hertz, going up and down about 10 times each second. What you're hearing there is the beat note, the difference between those two frequencies. Now again, maybe you could tell the difference between 500 hertz and 510 hertz, but what if we make the difference even smaller? Let's make our second note now 501 hertz, only one hertz different. Now when I play these two notes, listen carefully to each one, one at a time, and see if you can really hear the difference. Here's the 500 hertz signal again. And now I'll play the 501 hertz signal. Now for most of us, it's really hard to tell the difference between those two tones. But once again, I will play them at the same time. They'll occur in space towards your ear, overlapping, interfering, and you'll hear this. There's that long, slow modulation there, getting louder and softer, while there's that 500 hertz sound in the background that's getting louder and softer. Now, that's quite easy to hear. You can clearly tell that there's a second frequency there, that slow, loud, soft, loud, soft frequency. Even though there's only one hertz different, it would be hard to tell those two notes apart unless you were overlapping them and hearing that interference process. And that explains why in many, many applications, doing interference type experiments like we just did with sound can give us very, very precise understandings of small differences in values. In fact, piano tuners use exactly this method when they're trying to get the strings in a piano to exactly the same sound. Another example that might use this is if you have machinery that might have vibration frequencies in there and you want them to be balanced and doing exactly the same thing. For example, jet engines underneath the wings on an aircraft. You can actually make them run at speed, and you can feel or hear the beat frequency if they're slightly, uh, slightly rotating at different frequencies. A very, very sensitive technique indeed, using interference, in this case, interference in time rather than space. Now in the next topic, we're going to stay with interference, but we're going to see what happens when two waves that are essentially identical, but travelling in different directions, overlap and interfere. 
something kind of strange and maybe unexpected happens. So I'll see you then.